Welcome to chapter one. We're going to be starting with business now and how change is the only constant in business. And if you know, with the internet, business is now moving at a breakneck speed for many reasons. We live in a fast paced world. And successful firms they're always ready to embrace change and you have to be able to embrace change to be successful um, businesses they have to seek opportunities avoid pitfalls you have to evaluate risk understand the market adhere to ethical practices but you also have to make a profit and that profit will really needs to be something where value is being delivered to the customer. So we'll start off out talking about what value is. It's your first term in your book. It's the relationship between the price of a good or service and the benefits that it offers to customers. So there's a price that the customer is willing to pay and say, oh yeah, I have to buy that. I need that because it does this for me. Like I'm willing to spend that amount of money for that product. That is value. Then you're going to have some basic definitions since we're starting this uh, course. Business, that's going to be any organization that provides goods and services in an effort to earn profit so it may be a service business like it could be a um, landscaping company they provide a service or it could be some uh, boutique that sells clothes they provide goods so a business can be goods or services or a mixture of both now profit is something that I talk about in accounting and if you own a business you're you're looking at profit and this is the money the business earns in sales minus the expenses such as how much the goods cost um, before you turn around and sold those and how much you have to pay your employees so profit is what you have left over after you pay salaries and pay for the goods that you sold or pay for the expenses they are lost. If a business has more expenses than they do revenue, then they don't have a profit. They would have a loss. And some of you in this course I know are entrepreneurs. These are people who risk their time, money, and resources to start and manage a new business. So, business improves the standard of living. So, the standard of a living, what is that? The quality and quantity of goods and services available. Businesses help raise the standard of living through taxes, which the government will spend on a variety of projects. This is according to your textbook. Um, the quality of life. The overall sense of well-being experienced by either a an individual or a group. So a lot of people start their own business because they want to improve their standard of living and quality of life. And you may know someone who has improved these things by starting their own business. But we need businesses. They contribute to society through innovation. And a lot of entrepreneurs are very creative and come up with new ways to provide goods or new services. One of the trends right now are the um, loaded teas. Someone got creative and thought of a way to start a business with selling these loaded teas. You have to be able to take risks and try new things when you're an entrepreneur. Okay, the history of business. Now we're going to get into a little bit of a history lesson here. And 
This is in your book, and we're going to start with the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution, you probably learned about this in history, but it really changed lifestyles in a huge way. And the way it did that is we started having factories pop up and more of instead of a, um, you know, a, a country type lifestyle growing up in the country, there started to be more of a urban lifestyle. So people started living closer to the factories so they could get to work. And that was in the mid 17 to 1800s. And then you had the entrepreneurship era. This is the second half of the 1800s. And many called this era the Gilded Age. And this is when your businesses, your business empire started popping up. And some took advantage of workers and consumers, some of these businesses. And what happened during this era is because uh, people were taken advantage of, the government stepped in and started regulating businesses more. Now, the Great Depression and World War II occurred during what we call the production era. And this is when the shift started um, in the way that we looked at customers and well it, your book talks a little bit more about that in detail the production area the focus was more on getting the product sold we didn't really care what the customers needs were we were just trying to produce and the customers would be happy with what we produce then we started shifting toward the marketing area era after world war ii and then we really focused on um, the consumers or the customers and how much power the customers actually have. So we started catering more to the customer. So we wanted to do what we could to make the customer happy and hopefully word would get out and other people would, would want to buy our product too. And then... Um, so we're starting to shift more toward the customer. But then you have the relationship era. And this is a little bit going a little bit further than marketing. And we are really just trying to not only get the customer to buy, but maintain a relationship with the customer. Your book quoted um, a technology entrepreneur, Lisa Mazzello. Happy customers are your biggest advocates and they can become your most successful sales team. So that's a little bit of history of how the focus has shifted um, starting with the Industrial Re Revolution all the way to, your, to the relationship era. And there's some notes on this too. And you may, uh, you may know some examples of nonprofits. And these are actually, these are businesses that employ people and they produce goods and services, but their goal is a little bit different. The goal of a nonprofit is to contribute to the community rather than general financial gain. So you can look up some nonprofits. Uh, one that I think of that I really think is neat is Mississippi Coats for Kids. And so they're a nonprofit and they, um, try to raise money or donations so that every child in the state has winter coat, gloves, caps when the temperature drops. Um, so it's a great nonprofit, but they often focus on health, human services, art, religion, culture, and they can contribute to a community's economic stability and growth. But these are businesses too their goals are just a little bit different than your typical business. Okay, now we're going to shift to look at um, your factors of reduction. So there are four fundamental elements. You have your natural resources, capital, human resources, and entrepreneurship. So these are the four fundamental elements that businesses need to achieve their objective. So you have natural resources, 
Um, so this could be like land, fresh water, wind, mineral deposits. Um, those are your natural resources. I do have a note that that does not include agricultural products. Then you have your capital, and this is your machines, your tools, your buildings, your information and technology. Um, so capital, when we're talking about capital here, we're not talking about money. And then you have your human resources. This is your worker knowledge. And this is very important to workforce effectiveness. You have to have good people in there that think and that are have a lot of expertise to really um, help your business be successful. And then entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is a... This is process of creating opportunities by harnessing, taking these factors of production. So you, you need someone that has the ability to take all this and make it successful. So when you think of a business, you may be thinking about the business itself, but that's not how it works because you have outside factors that play a role in determining the success of the business or the failure of the business. So each dimension here affects both the individual business and the economy in general. So you can see here we have social environment, global environment, technological environment, competitive environment, and economic environment. So the economic environment, um, yeah, the economy is affected by corruption and ethical lapses such as shady accounting so we have um, legislation that is supposed to prevent these type of things or help deter this but we always when we're looking at a business we have to look at the economy because certain things are not going to sell when the economy is uh, not doing so well so that is one factor that will affect our business. And then the competitive environment. That's something we have to, when we open a business or we're an entrepreneur, we are affected by our competitor. And it says here that not only are we competing with companies in the U.S. now, we're competing globally, especially now that products can be sold online. And so we also develop, we need to develop long-term, mutually beneficial relationships with the customer because of this competition. And an example, leading edge versus bleeding edge. Well, the speed to market provides competitive advantage. So the rate at which a product moves from concept to commercialization, if you can get that product out there faster and it's a good product, you're going to sell more. Bleeding edge is getting that product out there too fast when um, the market's not ready for it and it fails. So you want to be leading edge, but you don't want to be bleeding edge. And the workforce advantage. You want to find, try to find the best talent, get the employees. You want to find good employees. And sometimes that can be hard to do, but that is definitely advantage and advantage. If you can find employees with expertise, um, they're going to help your competitive advantage. And then you have to have good top management, too, and good leaders um, in your business because that will affect your employee satisfaction and your retention. So it's all about having good management that can lead and also having good employees that are happy and want to work there.